Yes, so we have, uh, we have an um, amazing speaker next with uh, quite uh, extensive, uh, unusually extensive experience from um, uh, policy sector and policy making from on different, different areas in the Finnish uh, society. Uh, he's uh, Mr. Olli Pekka Heinonen, Director General of the Finnish National Agency for Education and also very uh, active in uh, complexity network uh, here in Finland. So without further ado, I would uh, warmly like to welcome uh, Mr. Heinonen to give your uh, speech um, on complexity informed policy making. Thank you. Nelly, thank you so much and, and thank you for having this chance of, of sharing um, my kind of perspective and ideas about complexity in foreign policy making. Um, to kind of say of the background, um, I would say that my path to complexity and system thinking, also behavioral insights, and kind of in integral thinking has gone through the fact that those have been the kind of sectors and kind of sciences that have had the kind of strongest sense-making power to me. When I have been doing my job as, as a member of the, of the government or, or a, a civil servant. And of course my view is a uh, view from the national level, but at the same time, I think that the ideas about complexity can be kind of implemented on the individual level, on a community level, on a national level, and even on a clo uh, global level. And a kind of a big, moment for me was about five years ago um, when the Finnish government um, made three times decision about a large package of structural reforms. I was the state secretary in the prime minister's office at that time and it went so that first there was the decision about the package and a, and a kind of a media um, kind of press conference on it. Then after a couple of months, there was another decision, which was almost exactly the same decision. And then there was a third decision, which was titled the implementation of the package. And the problem was that it didn't get implemented. There was a huge number of individual structural reforms that has, had been prepared for, prepared for a long time in different ministries. And we did a kind of a overview later that what was the kind of success of the implementation and our estimate was that it was about 15% of the whole package. And that was kind of a moment for me to understand that the kind of making decisions doesn't mean that the changes happen. That there's clearly a gap between these two things. And to me, it's a lot, it has a lot to do with a kind of complexity. Um, and, and for that reason, I've kind of tried to utilize those ideas of complexity and systems thinking in my work so much as possible and, and, and study those also. First, I would like to kind of go through with you that how I see that what is the challenge from the policymaker or a civil servant's point of view. If we take the, the next slide, I think the big issue is that... Um, we have moved from a situation that we thought that it's possible to have control and balance 
to have a kind of a linear kind of gradual planning and implementing for the future to a situation where we have found out that we are entirely dealing with uncertainty and unpredictability. And of course, the COVID-19 is a perfect example that how interconnected our world is. And when the world is interconnected, it means also that the less we know what will happen next. And that's the kind of a big challenge. And it's also kind of connected with the kind of a crisis of future, as it was, I think, Edgar Morin, who, who kind of made the title, meaning that we don't know what progress anymore is, because the linearity doesn't happen. And we are kind of, the reality is happening in a kind of a network that um, the, the, the kind of emergence property of that network is very strong. And that is connected, if we take the next slide, with the challenge that we also have the kind of experiential complexity. Meaning that as most of our kind of societal challenges are adaptive challenges, meaning that there's nobody from the outside that can solve them but they can only kind of succeed if we all that are connected to those challenges change. And that's the kind of question then that if there can't be an objective solution, then we are talking about subjective solutions. And we have the kind of experiential complexity, meaning that we all have different subjective kind of experiences uh, about the reality. And this is also, of course, something that, ha that has to do with kind of individual citizens, but very strongly also professionals, kind of different experts, that they are looking at the reality from their kind of professional eye classes. And, and, and that kind of, uh, kind of the, the kind of professional view, it's all, always a kind of a, uh, there, is, there is light on certain part, what, you, what that profession is looking at, but there's also shadows. It's a perspective, so there's a lot that it leaves outside. And that's the other challenge that I think we are experiencing. Then if we go to the next slide, uh, I think that this kind of modified uh, model by Zimmerman uh, makes a lot of sense to me that we still a lot think that there, there is kind of certainty about how things are and there's agreement how they ought to be. And that's not true. And of course, that's what we are seeing in the political discussion around the world. But, but there is kind of clear disagreement about how things are and also disagreement how they should be. And when, that, when that's the case, then we enter the area of kind of wicked problems. And that's something that we're in the political decision making and in um, also in uh, kind of how public services, for example, are implemented, we're not used to dealing with those. And then going to the next slide, it kind of leads us to the, to the other aspect of complexity, which is the kind of compositional complexity or combinatorial complexity, meaning that there is kind of many things that are affecting when, for example, in my work, I have a task to try to increase the equity in our education system. And there's, it's not kind of possible to solve that challenge, but that challenge is kind of full of paradoxes that refuse to be solved. 
So you have to be able to kind of dance with that situation and try to have outcomes that are better than the existing situation. And then if we go to the next one, where, which is a picture which is based on OECD indicators of the national well-being system. This is actually a simplified version of that map, um, which shows that, that the kind of complexity is also dynamic by character, that the interaction between different actors are always changing. And then it's kind of important to understand that what the relationships are, how much interaction there is, how, how tight that interaction is, um, and, and, and kind of um, from the uh, kind of systems point of view, are there too little interaction? Are there too much interaction? What are the strong nodes there? And how could we kind of help that system to be developing to the uh, direction that we want to go to? And that's the kind of, to me, the reason why we should understand complexity. The reason is that complexity and system thinking, it kind of describes the processes and the environment where the outcomes we care about are made. And if we don't understand that environment and those processes, we will not succeed. Um, let's go to the next picture. That kind of leads me to the idea which has a lot to do, of course, with kind of behavioral insights. Because uh, from my point of view, I've seen that actually implementation becomes so important that actually implementation becomes the strategy. The way that things are implemented carries with it kind of so important messages that it is kind of strategic. Uh, it was McLuhan who had the saying that um, media is the message. And I think this is the similar thing that implementation carries with it a strategic message. And I think there are kind of three different ways, if we go to the next slide, that, for example, public policymaking has been trying to read desired outcomes and change. The first is authority, using kind of authority given by the legislation or power, where the kind of hierarchy defines the roles and somebody has the right to determine what is desired and how it will be exceeded. And of course, that's a very uh, effective way if the sanctions are strong. And if there's a lot of trust in the system, Using the authority also kind of uses a lot of social capital. So there's the danger that, that uh, you kind of, using a lot of authority, you use, um, you get kind of out of um, social capital and you lose your authority by that. And this is also um, an, a kind of an area where the idea of kind of representative agent is very important. Because when somebody has to think that they know what's, what, what, how things are and how they should be, they have to use the idea that there's an average person that the ideas are implemented to. It's the kind of um, human being with one testicle that we humans on average, that's the way we are. Um, if we go to the next one, then there is the idea of using reason, that somebody knows 
what should be done. Uh, hold on, Olipekka is uh, muted. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, perfect. No. Um, it, it's kind of based on the idea that there is the um, one who knows the solution and his or her argumentation is so good that others understand to follow them, follow him or her. And that's a kind of tradition of, of enlightenment. And then there is the third one, which is actually learning, where you understand that the reason is important, but you also understand that uh, there are other things that are important. The values, the attitudes, the emotions, the social cultural norms, the kind of su uh, sub uh, subjective experience is very, very vital. And that kind of aims at commitment. And that's the kind of a change process, which is not from the top down, but it's more kind of a change that is happening with the people that are owners of the challenges. And for that reason, kind of experimenting so that the personal experience is possible and it makes the learning possible is very, very vital. If we go to the next one, there are kind of two or, or, or a way of kind of looking at the learning and, and um, in, in a complex environment, the learning is a continuous process. Part of the kind of behavioral insights and behavioral economics thinking in the UK, there was these kind of what work centers that were created. And, and I was also very thrilled about their way of doing. But then after a while, kind of looking at the way they were working, I became a bit kind of curious about that. Does it really work that way? Because when we are in a world that is constantly changing, the thing that worked yesterday might not work tomorrow and for that reason the kind of what works is continuously changing and as we are used to in the governments also to kind of steer through kind of performance management or or kind of um, management by results we should move actually more to the capacity management, making sure that the learning of different actors happens and that makes the adaptability of those actors and the resilience possible. Let's go to the next one. Uh, there are kind of two ways of learning uh, and the, the one is kind of intended learning and that's the kind of thing that, again, happens from top down. The teacher knows what the children should know and he or she tells them how facts are. The th kind of learning I'm talking now is about kind of emergent learning. And that's the learning that uh, kind of the learners and the teachers or the kind of policy makers the implementers, the citizens, the research activity with the kind of action research approach, all the time themselves keep up with what kind of good looks like. And that leads me to the kind of, kind of process of emergent learning, which I see is in the next slide, which I see is kind of very, very kind of interesting uh, where you kind of have to start with making sense that how things are. What are the challenges with, that we are trying to kind of deal with? If we are kind of dealing with different challenges, it's very difficult to have kind of united outcomes. 
And then we need the generative conversations, the dialogue, uh, dialogue um, kind of discussions, and utilizing the diversity of different views. And we have to be able to be comfortable with uncertainty and ambiguity. And then we must understand the system where what we are dealing with and the kind of characters of that system, the openness the emergent property, the kind of uh, both and character in the system and so on. And to have the reflective practices where the learning really happens, which creates the learning loop. And again, this is something that can be applied on an individual level or a team level or a community level or a national level or maybe even on a, on a global level. And this is very similar that there are kind of different approaches, um, like the kind of adaptive action ideas or collective impact or collective intelligence. I would say that they are all kind of relatives to this approach. They kind of, kind of emphasize on different aspects of this kind of a make, uh, process of, of making the desired change happen. Um, but I think this is the thing that it is very, very important that we could increase the complexity um, informed policy making. And for that reason, I'm very keen on um, learning out that, as Nelly was mentioning in the beginning, that there will be a toolbox for policymakers. Um, and I think that is exactly what we are needing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is, I still am uh, habituated to kind of expecting to hear the audience applause. Um, let's, let's take uh, questions. Thank you for an excellent, excellent talk. And, and given your um, experience, experience both as a uh, member of parliament and minister, and then as a civil servant, this is um, Re really uh, kind of interesting also to hear uh, from that perspective. And is it really so that, that it was like five years ago when you really woke up to this um, necessity of systems thinking, or was it already earlier? Uh, it, it was already earlier, but that kind of, kind of uh, proved me that there is something fundamentally wrong in the way that we think that policy is done today. Yeah, yeah. So it really alarmed alarmed you. And also our uh, kind of the behavior change intervention development frameworks, uh, it, is, it, it is very often that the implementation is too much of a separate um, activity after everything is created. And more and more people are talking about it that from very early on, you need to think about implementation. Is this feasible to be implemented? and engage everyone, engage the providers and the stakeholders that are critical for the implementation process. Otherwise, it's just futile. So, yeah. so I think that's something that people have been waking up to in various different areas. Uh, you know, this is interventions in healthcare or in schools. It's the same, same problem. Yeah. <laughs> Husband is in, in the background. Um, do we have uh, questions in the in the Q and A, A um, panel or no? We don't have any questions yet. Yeah, there's Do one question now. Uh, Olga Elizarova is asking: uh, How does this proposed approach of emergent learning, with the way government's budget and uh, measures outcomes, sounds very promising? But I'm wondering if it fits other parts of the system. Um, I think that's an excellent question, and, and uh, the issue is exactly how to find the coherence in the kind of main processes of decision making. And uh, it, it traditionally doesn't fit very well. Uh, I would say that we in Finland have quite a mature uh, kind of political discussion between the government and the parliament, for example. 
but still the way that the most important tasks about deciding how the uh, taxpayers' money is used and what are the outcomes that are reached through those resources, which is a kind of main task of a national parliament. Uh, there's a lot to be done on that, to be able to create the learning loop there, that there's a, actually a continuous kind of discussion there. And of course, then it also implies the way that uh, what is the kind of steering culture uh, nationally? We do have in Finland a strength, which is that we have a lot of autonomy in the municipal level. And, and, and that's, a, that's a good thing, because it's usually good to have kind of small learning loops, because they are faster to adapt to change. And that's the kind of strength in the Finnish system. Yes, that's absolutely important. Having the very uh, the decision maker and making and the um, learning come from like local uh, structures and rippling sort of uh, upwards in this sense. Uh, what do you think? How well this uh, um, local response uh, idea has worked during the coronavirus pandemic here? Well, if I look the kind of from from my current job uh, the fact that teachers have a lot of autonomy about their kind of teaching and 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 kind of what happens in the classroom and with their children i think it made it possible for us in finland in two time two two days time to shift from from kind of school-based learning to distance learning so that the kind of teaching and le learning never stopped right and right. and if that would have happened through the kind of national level with kind of giving kind of rules and regulations that how it should have been done uh it would have taken kind of a month i would say so in that sense it worked pretty well isn't isn't the the fact that uh, Finnish teachers are given a lot of autonomy and they have quite a long education hasn't that been attributed to the pisa success uh, factor as well that there is actually the kind of the system believes the, the schooling system believes that that uh, teachers are active learning agents that are capable of self, like organizing their work in the best possible way so, so isn't this one of the success factors? It definitely is. Uh, and I think that is a kind of a, a basis for kind of having a successful education system in today's world. Because that kind of high educational background of teachers and the autonomy makes it possible that all the actors can rely on each other's expertise. So there's a lot of kind of trust in the system and trust is exactly the emergent property of a system that uh, it's kind of essential for the connections and interaction between different actors uh, to function and, and uh, kind of these times there's a lot of things in our societies that kind of harm trust so I feel for example that my main task is to try to feed the system with trust to kind of bring different actors together and see and make them understand each other's challenges and try to kind of see that what's the common goal that we could kind of all agree to move forward to that direction. So, so uh, I, 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 I think that we do have kind of systems that are more centralized led that have good PISA results, but I know that at the moment also those systems 
are increasing the autonomy on the teacher and school level. Thank you. Very, very, very interesting. And I really like the idea that, you know, that you, as you said, that capacity building, capacity building is the key. And, and also, really, I, I, I can believe that it nicely uh, increases trust between the actors uh, in this. Yes. I think, uh, is there any. Is, is, oh, do you want to read out loud, Matti? Yeah, so uh, the first question is, uh, does the Finnish government have a general development and impl implementation plan for applying complexity informed decision uh, policy making? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that they do have, but there is clearly a strong interest in understanding the complex environment and the systems um, and that has also been happening for for seven eight years now that that i know that the government has discussed er earlier years among themselves uh, the questions of wicked problems and the new ways of implementing things and also trying to understand the complexity and also the leading civil servants all have gone through a a uh, um, kind of a development course or a kind of an educational uh, program where the complexity issues are quite strongly uh, discussed. And so, so, so I would say that there be starts to begin to have that we are having a kind of a critical mass of understanding also with the, on the ministerial level. And do you think, um, there's a question, are the teachers in Finland aware of complexity or systems uh, science approaches of thinking? Um, well, it's a, it's a good question. I think that they are aware of the character of the environment where they are doing their job. For example, understanding that well-being and uh, well-being and learning are strongly interconnected. And if the other one is not there, the other one won't be either. And they also understanding the fact that there's this kind of governance complexity meaning that there is no single actor, the school can take care of all the aspects of the well-being of a child, but there is again the need to uh, bring the different expert views between different authorities together and through that um, try to kind of um, reach better outcomes. Uh, there, there's uh, one more question. Uh, how much time do government people and parliament members spend hands-on with uh, emergent learning functions as part of their roles, like uh, Google does with 20% uh, of their time you can use to innovate and be exposed to open-minded, uh, mind-opening ways or your own projects? Uh, is there something like this where the uh, government people and parliament members can uh, work on their own uh, pro pet projects uh, in their uh, time? Uh, I dare not to say w when I was on those duties, uh, there wasn't. Um, so, so I would say that these are still quite new things. Um, but I know that, for example, with the, on the ministerial level, with the civil servants, uh, there is a kind of a movement of civil servants who do not want to work the traditional way anymore. And they are collaborating a lot and always kind of experimenting on things. And of course, the experimentation has been a big thing in, in Finland, also in different government programs, um, trying to find kind of new ways to understand also kind of um, human behavior and how kind of outcomes um, are reached.
Uh, do we have time for one more question, Nelly? Yeah, maybe we do. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask if you, um, what kind of a success or uh, uh, failures or uh, challenges have you had in communicating the complexity perspective to other people, especially in governmental roles? Because when I speak to researchers, um, the reaction I get is often like, oh, so uh, those things that you're talking about, they're so fuzzy and, uh, uh, and weird. And uh, I have this regression model that tells me what's going to happen next. And it not only gives me the uh, sort of uh, causal pathways, but also like the uh, weights and uh, what's most important and uh, all of that and I don't need to care about context and all of that and it, it becomes uh, very hard sometimes to argue against that view when it's uh, it promises so much uh, more clarity and a nicer uh, perspective. Yeah exactly um, I, I have been there too <laughs> um, but, but the I think the word complex is one reason and that's why I always try to open up that word because if you say that you have a, a, a kind of a complex relationship with your mother, that that's a kind of sets a certain tone on, on, on that word. And, and to me, kind of complex, the, the opposite is not kind of simple. But to me, the opposite is kind of disintegrated. It's kind of separate. Complexity is kind of complex or uh, kind of together uh, woven. So it's kind of a network. So it's kind of a kind of connecting the dots of getting to understand the bigger picture. So for me, complexity makes things easier to understand. And it's not complicated, which is things that must be kind of steered strongly so that you can manage with uh, that kind of um, complicated things. So um, once you get behind that, then I have found out that there's a lot of kind of, it, it makes sense at, at the same time, that I do get a lot of kind of positive feedback also about kind of opening up the world with kind of new lenses to look at it. 